Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of my Total War Warhammer 2 The Hunter and the Beast DLC campaign. This campaign will be for, for Marcus Wolfhart or the Empire Provinces. We're going to be playing on very hard, very hard. Marcus Wolfhart starts with archers, huntsmen, and a war wagon. They got a limited roster, only basic units are immediately recruitable. Reinforcements from the Empire bring powerful units to bolster your armies. Hostile actions will result in retaliation from local factions, but will also empower your own armies. Starts off with recruit rank plus 3 for Huntsman Generals, which is a new gen general type in this DLC. We have a uh, minus 40 diplomatic relations with the Lizardmen. Marcus Wolfar himself has ambush defense chance plus 50%, ambush success chance plus 50%, and upkeep minus 50% for archers and huntsmen units. We got the Emperor's Mandate. Receive the Emperor's acclaim by advancing the Empire's cause in Lustria, leading to the provision of better quality units to reinforce the expedition. Wolfhart's Hunters. Attain the, service of s the services of some of the finest hunters to have ever lived. Well-rounded unit roster with a wide range of magical lords and war machines, obviously. Because this is an Empire faction. And we're going to go ahead and get into the campaign. The jungle continent of Lustria lies west across the great ocean. The first men to land upon these shores ransacked an ancient temple, filling their ships with golden treasures. Word spread of their wealth, and others were eager to follow. Fueled by greed, men of the Empire ventured deeper into the jungle's heart. The land of beasts ravaged and plundered for its riches. It will not be without consequence. The jungle stirs. A cold-blooded fury rising to punish the invaders. In the temple cities of Lustria, the Lizardmen enact a ritual to call upon their mighty guardian. For the Wanderer roams Lustria once more. The spirit of the jungle made manifest. A reckoning has come. Only the strongest will survive the coming bloodshed. Having voyaged across the great ocean on the Emperor's command, I shall tame this jungle-infested continent and plunder it for the treasures it holds. The near unimaginable wealth of these lands is dispatched home through the coastal colonies, but recent raids by the lizard beasts have set the Empire back, and I expect further attacks. Other enemies loom nearby, Savage orcs, no less, who raid nearby abandoned cities. These ancient places are sure to harbor more riches, so are prime locations for colonization. But we must be aware that the lizard beasts dominate these jungles. 
For our colonies to survive their threat, reinforcements will be needed from home. The time of opportunity is now. Lustria and its dangers await. Anything that stands before me in the hope of defeating the Empire will meet its end by my bow. It is the Emperor's will. How they play the Hunt Marshal's expedition. The Emperor's Mandate. Sent to the shores of Lustria by Imperial Mandate, Marcus Wolfhart intends to protect the New World colonies from the Lustrian predators with only limited supplies and troop numbers, as further reinforcements will not arrive from the Old World for quite some time. However, increasing the expedition's acclaim by raiding the jungles and expanding your territory into them will lead better quality troops dispatched in your Imperial supplies to further aid the expedition. The lands beyond the Empire are a hostile place. Your actions there will not go unnoticed by the natives. Winning offensive battles and harassing local inhabitants will increase their hostility towards you, but also improve your standing with the Emperor and increase the rate at which Imperial supplies reach the expedition. Cross the locals too much, though, and face their wrath. Wolfhart's Hunters Scattered across the world are some of the finest hunters to have ever lived. To ever have lived. Track them down and secure their services to complete the expedition's goals whilst developing each hunter's unique attributes and learning of their past glories and tragedies. Dangerous neighbors. Capture and occupy a settlement bela belonging to the following faction, Telexlan. Hunt Marshal, they are monstrous reptiles inhabiting a settlement close by. Our colonies will struggle to survive while they threaten us. The removal is crucial. Look at this guy, what? Is this the guy giving us the quest? Barry Drudy. If we complete this quest, we'll get plus 500 to our treasury. I'm guessing the, uh... The best way is to go for Chotek. Oh, we could go for Tlaxlan, their capital, but... Obviously, that's gonna be much more difficult. Three, six, seven units. Oh, and here are the blue vipers. Temple of Kara. Drakenberg's vengeance. What is this? Scouts of the Empire. Imperial Guardians. Okay, so this is our acclaim. This is a. Uh, a claim is a measure of how much progress the expedition makes towards fulfilling the Emperor's mandate. Expansion, building or upgrading ports, or unlocking special characters will increase a claim and lead to better quality reinforcements dispatched from home via the Imperial Supplies system. No settlements captured, no ports built or upgraded, and no hunters unlocked obviously since this is the first turn. We're just getting started with the campaign. And here's the hostility bar. I think we're at level 1. Public order minus 1 to all provinces. Imperial supplies are dispatched at low frequency. You're more than a little unwelcome. The enemy is starting to take more notice of you. Level 2, very hostile. You have agitated the enemy further. They now take heed of your aggression. Imperial supplies are dispatched at normal frequency. Public order minus 2. Extremely hostile. Your actions have made you a prime target for the enemy. Imperial supplies are dispatched at high frequency. Enemy leadership plus 5. Enemy weapon strength plus 10%. Public order minus two. Severely hostile. The enemy bays for your blood. Best be on your guard. Imperial supplies are dispatched at very high frequency. Enemy leadership plus eight. Enemy weapon strength plus 15%. Public order minus two. Your warmongering ways have put you right at the top of the enemy's hit list. Imperial supplies are dispatched immediately. Hostility, hostility level resets to zero after five turns. Enemy leadership plus 10. Enemy weapon strength plus 25%. That's a lot. That's fucking very brutal. Public order minus 5 to all provinces. But at least that only is in effect for 5 turns. I'm guessing that's basically... Because this is the um, this is the Vortex campaign. I'm guessing that's similar to the High Elf and uh, Dark Elf mechanic where you're uh where you have to do the ritual and the dark elves or the high elves can each pay to send a, an ai army against you 
So I'm guessing it's similar to that. You're going to have like big AI armies attacking you, but it's only for like a limited amount of time. Okay, so let's go ahead and upgrade. We're going to upgrade to the rally field, try to get better units. Captain of get into the first battle of the campaign. If you guys want to see a much better version of this campaign, I would suggest go watch Lionheart X10. There'll probably be an annotation popping up on the screen now. He's already on episode 3 because he got he had early access. So if you guys want to see way into the campaign, go ahead and check him out. Fight with clout, comrades. Let's go ahead and fight that battle. Okay, let's see. The Empire endures. We're gonna get our Huntsman and Marcus Wolfhard up. I didn't even look at the units they had. They got a fucking Feral, Bales B B Feral Bastilladon. Source Warrior, Skin Cohort, Skin Cohort with Javelin, Skin Cohort. Weapons at the ready! Outriders! Huntsmen. Okay, Huntsmen are anti-large. They got Vanguard deployment, obviously. They have stock in firewalls moving. Do they have a... Okay, they've only got a... Uh, okay, they got firewalls moving, but they can't fire in a 360 degree arc. They can only fire in front of them. Here are the war wagons. Filled with... Are these guys handgunners, or are these the... Oh, these are the guys with the, uh... No, I think these are handgunners, right? I don't remember. I haven't played this game in a very long time. But I thought that the guys with, uh, these, like, rotating... These, uh, rifles that, like, rotate the barrel to fire in ne next round... I thought that those were like a different unit that, that isn't in the game yet. Because I remember seeing mods, people with mods that had created the game, created that unit for the game. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't, honestly don't remember, I haven't played this game in a very long time. Oh no, I'm not thinking of the handgunners, I'm sorry, not, not, obviously these aren't the handgunners, these are the uh, outriders. Right, these guys are outriders, or they have the outrider rifles. Yeah. Now I remember, because the outriders fire way faster than uh, handgunners. Okay, we're going to start the battle. Get these guys up quick. Get these war wagons up, because we're going to need those armor-piercing rounds to fire up against that Bastilladon. We're gonna use Marcus Wolfhart's ability, focus shot, focus on that feral Bastilladon. That's a hit. Pull these guys back. Get our archers to focus on that feral Bastilladon. Get Marcus off to this side. Let's get the Huntsmen over here. They're in skirmish, so I can't order them around. Focus on that Bastilladon. Let's get the Spearman in there. We really need to bring that down.
All right, it's almost gone. Come on. Just a little bit longer. It's Huntsman need to back up. You guys are almost getting attacked. Our swords been routed. Of course they did. Our spearmen routed. You gotta be kidding me. Come on, we need to get rid of that Bastilodon. It's terrorizing our fucking units. Focus on that Bastilodon. Obviously our infantry is terrible. They're just swordsmen and spearmen. Chasing after our huntsmen, the, the fucking skinks are so damn quick. Let's get these spearmen over here. Hopefully they can block them. The good thing about our units are that they will come back. Let's get Wolfhard out Marcus out of there. He's actually fucking losing against that skink general. Or no, that's the Saurus general. Come on, I didn't tell you to go back. Stay away from him. Quickly! Yes, sir! To battle! Spearmen! Ready! Come on, Huntsman, get out of there. Uh, Marcus, you focus on that general. Archers, you turn around and focus on those enemies. We can just lead the general away with these swordsmen, then we can just keep shooting him in the back. I think he just got hit by that. Okay, well, he caught up to us. We're going to have to focus on him now with the swordsman unit. Okay, stop firing at that now. Swordsman, get out of there. You're just going to draw fire. Finish him off. Come on, Swordsman, get in there. Why are you turned around? Turn th that way. Think, yeah, they're out of ammunition. We're gonna have them charge. We need to kill that general and get that uh, morale penalty for them. Okay, turn around, archers. Fire into the Saurus warriors. No, those are skin cohorts. These are the Saurus warriors. And they're almost at full health. We need to fire into them. Let's use focus shot on them as well. Um, I'm left clicking. Oh, you can only use it on a single entity. Damn. That sucks. Alright. I think we took out their general. Oh no, he's back. I ordered them to chase him down, but they did not. Let's get our swordsmen back. They did. Fortunately, they did come back from routing. We gotta focus on these guys. Come on, Wolfheart, keep firing into them. If that general comes back, we can use focus shot on him. We'll use our war wagons as like chariots for now. Because 
Because they are out of ammunition. There we go. We actually won. Shit, that was tough. These, uh... Now I remember why I didn't like the Empire. Playing as the Empire early on. Watch your back. If I had some cavalry, I'd probably chase them down. Let's just end the battle. Period victory, yeah, that sounds about right. Well, we lost about half our force. A little bit more than half. I mean, this swordsman unit actually did pretty well, and so did these spearmen with shields. These huntsmen... Or I think these are the Huntsmen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are the Huntsmen. Did really well. 127 kills. The War Wagons only got 13 kills, but... That's because I did have them focusing on the Bastilladon. And it still took a very long time to fucking bring it down. And that was with the Huntsmen and Marcus and the War Wagons firing at it. Bring out the nooses. Any last utterances? Well, uh, we'll go for the money. Wish we could. Re well, it wouldn't make sense for us to replenish from that, Mobilize. seeing as they're lizard men. Okay, we got a hunter. It takes skill to stalk wild animals while avoiding the dark creatures of the woods. Ambush success chance plus 10%. Faction encountered vampire coast mutineers. War declared, spirit of the jungle. The blood god roars for war has come. The enemy gathers his forces. Spirit of the jungle against us, the Hunts Marshal's expedition. Damn, they're going to be replenishing. We're also replenishing. I'm trying to think... Would it be better to replenish ourselves? Is eager. How much are these guys replenishing? Another I think... Trophy for the Hunts what is this? I've never By seen this comment. faction. Freebooters of Port Royale. Neutral transport ships. Gentleman Jenkins. What faction is that? Okay, we got research. State troop standards. Leadership plus 5 for infantry units. Speed plus 5% for infantry units. Weapon strength plus 10% for infantry units. Growth plus 10. Public order plus 2. Leadership plus 5 for cavalry units. Armor to plus 10 for cavalry units. Reload time reduction plus 8% for artillery units. We don't have any artillery right now. Ammunition plus 10% for free company, militia, crossbowmen, huntsmen, archers, handgunners, pistoliers, and outrider missile units. If this affected the war wagon, then I probably would go for that. Income from industry plus 10%. I don't think we have any industry buildings at the moment. Recruit rank plus 2, per plus two for all mi imperial supplies units. Seaborne logistics. Construction cost minus 10% for ports. Construction time minus 1 for ports. Amasiri to the Prince of Altdorf, this trusted advisor whose loyalty is beyond reproach, knows the Emperor's mind almost as well as Karl Franz himself. Diplomatic relations plus 25 with men, Empire Kislev, Southern Realms plus 1 public order. Ambassador to the Phoenix King, successful dealings with the lofty, aloof, Asur takes a certain type of individual, if awkward diplomatic misunderstandings are to be avoided. Plus 50 relations with High Elves. Okay, that's pretty cool, I like this. We're going to go for... Right now we've got a lot of infantry, so we'll try to boost them up as much as we can. The scouts shall never fall. 
on the hunt. And we're gonna go try to finish them off real quick. Uh, actually, we can just auto resolve it now. Bring out the nooses. Fight with clout, comrades. This is auto resolve. I'm, I'm sure we're gonna have much more battles. Today you live. The Emperor Charmed Shield. And we've leveled up Marcus Wolfhart. Charmed Shield. Plus five melee defense. Ability Charmed Shield. Ward saved. Last 17 seconds. Plus 24 missile parry with shield. Plus 22% damage resistance. Holy yeah. I. Did I just say holy yeah? Yeah, I fucking did because I think I was trying to say holy shit. And then I was trying to say hell yeah at the same time. Today like a fucking idiot. You live. Rum button killed him. Our enemy belonging to Lok Taloxlan has perished in the battle at Chotek, Scorpion Coast. And we're gonna pull back so we can Move, replenish. Comrades. Oh, okay, it's not right click. Huh? How do you level up? Okay. I'm so used to three kingdoms. Sorry about that. Cooldown minus 25% to focus shot. That sounds really fucking nice. Amber Bow. What level do we have to be for this? Rank 8. Damn. Route Marcher is always really good to go for to increase that campaign movement range. Best of the best. Carl Franz is captain of scouts is the very best in his field. A f hunter truly without peer. Recruit rank plus 2 for all units. Impervious to attack. Marcus Wolfhart seems to almost bend the air around him. Arrows and blades just seem to glance off if they even connect. Melee defense plus 10. And missile resistance 10%. Master survivalist. The dense stock forest at Midland is the most unforgiving, inhospitable of training grounds. And the place where Wolfhart perfected his survival skills. Campaign movement range plus to 5%. Campaign line of sight plus 10%. Casualty replenishment rate plus 10%. Irregularly, as you might expect, the very best hunters make for elite ambushes and skirmishes. Available at rank 10. Upkeep minus 15% for huntsmen and archer units. Melee attack plus 8 for huntsmen units. Missile damage plus 10% for huntsmen and archer units. Reload time reduction even further. Oh no, this is just to his to his uh to his firing his bow. Plus six percent. Then we can get up to twelve percent. Missile damage we can get plus four percent, then up to fifteen. Only the foolish go on the hunt without supplies in the cast iron plan. This will increase his ammunition plus four percent and his speed four percent. And then it, at the next level, twelve percent respectively to both. Sure and true. Such advanced ballistic skills tend to rub off on one's subordinates. Focus shot. Ability sure and true augment area only acts on targets when in area constant. So this is like a, this is a buff that he gives to allies in range in 40 meters. Plus 5 reload skill, plus 5% missile damage, plus 5% armor piercing missile damage. Executioner. Wolfhart considers it his sworn duty to dispatch the Emperor's enemies without the slightest hesitation. Executioner replaces focused shot, magic missile, enemy 250 meters, projectile range 250 meters, scaled projectile damage against combatants with missing with missing health. Causes moderate magical damage. Good against large combatants and good against armor. So this one you can actually use against against a multiple a multiple entity unit melee defense hunter snare affects enemies in range so we can use this to freeze enemies in place hunter's trap This is the same thing. I'm guessing it, it, uh, effect range 
30 meters and it lasts for 22 seconds yeah it's double the double the duration I think for now we're gonna go for route marcher mission accomplished and we're gonna end the turn Axoato. Did they just get defeated there? Cause I saw it, it's, it was, it was, no. Did they get defeated? It was Hexoattle's turn. And I think they attacked that monolith of the fallen gods. And their army disappeared. Oh, these are like one of those, uh, is this like a roaming army? We are the best. One twenty. We definitely need more units. Public orders very bad at the moment Marcus Wolfhart Let's go for some more swordsmen And I kind of want a free company militia Marcus Wolfhart See if we can do any diplomacy. Sildrator. Oh, that is a rogue army. Free Buddha support royale. Equipment check. I haven't got all day. Let's see if we can get a trade agreement with. The New World Colonies. No. You will give me a trade agreement. I can't. Are you kidding me? Oh, definitely not going that high. Let's do four hundred. Not possible. All right, fuck these guys. So they don't want a trade agreement for now. It's probably because we don't have actually anything to trade. I don't remember what pastures gives you. I think it gives you like a boost to cavalry. Or no, pastures gives you a boost to population growth. Send the turn one, once again. Can't really do anything. We're recruiting. Not only that, we need to replenish. Recruit a unique hunter. Wolfhart, there are potential recruits here that might serve alongside our forces with a little persuasion. Make the effort to seek out these heroes and bring them on side. Treasure plus 500. Current objective, be at war with the following faction, Vampire Coast Mutineers. An exception, an exceptional individual. The world is full of individuals who stand out among their peers. Such people would be a boon to your mission. What is, oh, this is just the first person. This guy is obviously one of the, uh, Damn, what are they called? Oh, what are they called? The... God damn it. I don't remember what they're called. I haven't played this in so long. 
What a god's for second place this truly is. It seems that not a day goes by without the news of some horrible tropical disease striking some poor settler down. The most innocuous cut or scratch sustained here can be come horribly can become horribly infected within hours, making every trek into the jungle a highly risky endeavor indeed. Perhaps by fate, word has reached me of a mysterious individual who shadows the Empire's troops in the deep jungle, patching up the wounds of the gravely injured left behind following skirmishes with the lizards. Men thought to be well within Moore's deftly embrace have been mysteriously brought back from the brink by someone who clearly has advanced medical training, with even the most horrendous injuries cleaned, disinfected, and stitched, as if by the hands of the most highly trained physician in all of the Empire. Our very own injured relate to me their encounters with this healer, not remembering much other than glimpses of a necklace of fangs, trophies perhaps. I have been in new envi few environments more treacherous than, than, to man than Lustria, it goes without saying that for us to endure here, we should somehow reach out to this medic and persuade them to join our cause. Is it the Witch Hunter? Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think it is called the Witch Hunter. He's obviously a Witch Hunter. Slayer of Undead, proficient in laying the dead to rest permanently. Flexible role. Hero can be specialized as either a veteran warrior or a supporting healer. Whether it be at war with the following faction, the Vampire Coast Mutineers. I honestly don't know where they are right now. Let's see, I'm pretty sure we've already seen them. Blood kiss of the seas. Okay, they're all the way down there. Dreadlord, awaiting command. Damn, they're not that far from us. Oh yeah, they're here. And if I remember right, Teclis starts off over here. Unflinching! Construction complete of the rally field. Got our swordsmen and our up and our uh, free company militia. We can now get spearmen with shields and crossbowmen. We are the best. Good range, 160. Get some spear mill shields. And we'll get another free company militia. Marcus Wolfhart. We'll end the turn one more time. And after this, we'll attack that city of Chotek. Because I think with the new units, we should have... Ah, shit. Someone declared war on us. Yeah. I'll wager they are as primitive as they appear. Talanahuapek have been invited by our enemies, Talaxlan, to fight against us. The traitorous dogs will pay. Okay, we got our spearmen and our free company militia. Damn, we are replenishing pretty slowly. Ten men per turn. Marcus Wolfhart. Ready yourselves. Oh man. What are we fighting? Two Saurus warriors. Three skin cohort with javelins and cold one spear riders. Shit. These are the archers. For the Empire. Uh let's just go for it. It really doubts that we're going to be able to win this. And I guess, now that I'm looking at it, that actually makes kind of sense. We got like two full strength swordsmen. Our spearmen with shields, I think, can take on the cold one spear riders.
Let's get our Vanguard units up a little bit so they can start firing immediately. We'll uh, pull up Marcus Wolfhart as well. We'll put the spearmen. We'll keep these guys back because they're very low. Put the spearmen, the other spearmen on the flanks. Bring them up here. Our archers behind. We're gonna put our war wagons up here. Let's actually group these guys up. So I can just move them really quickly. Take the ground. Taking position. Fire. Fire. Yes, sir. My galvanas. Let's move up our spearmen. Ready for war. We'll move these swordsmen over there. Need to get these spearmen into those cold ones. Ready for war. Sir, ready. No Just fight those Soros warriors. Let's get our archers around. We are Sigma's heirs. Ready for war. Ready at speed to battle. Withdraw. Gonna put our. Uh, War wagons through. Damn, I was trying to hopefully shoot them in the back. Our swordsman already broke. We'll focus on the cold one spear riders with our huntsmen. You guys need to shoot those cold one spear riders. Yeah, they're gonna hit. They hit our swordsmen again. Take these guys off skirmish. They can easily fight off the skink cohort. Let's get our archers around the flank. Take these guys up skirmish, get them around the side. Standing by. Come on, finish off those cold one spear riders. Okay, they're almost completely gone. Get the war wagon around. Get these swordsmen into those Soros warriors. Let's move these archers up a little bit and around so we can get a better shot. Move the, these huntsmen over here as well. Marcus, you move too. Get these war wagons over here. We've already got them behind that unit, so they're shooting them in the back. There we go, we won. We actually won. Those damn Saurus warriors, man. 84 kills, 125. Marcus Wolfgar Wolfhard got 72 kills. That's pretty good. The Huntsman 69. Nice. Free, one in the Free Company Militia. 54 kills. I think those are the ones that we turned... No. Were they the ones that turned around and fought the Skinks? We are vanquished. 
I don't know if they were the ones that fought in melee. There we go, we leveled up again. We really need to improve our replenishment. A welcome extra payday. Sack, raise, occupy, loot These and occupy. Are ours. We're just gonna occupy for now. Chotak. Province secured, Scorpion Coast. Mission successful. Plus 500 to our treasury. Hostility increased. Your military activity has heightened the enemy's aggression towards the expedition. Increasing the hostility level. Imperial supplies and Nobby supports dispatched more often. Solid foundations. Maintain control of two provinces either by direct ownership or through vassals and military allies. If we are to build a future here, we'll fight. We must secure the entire province. Plus 500. Okay, we need to level this up. One more turn and we can level, we can build this settlement up. Recruitment cost minus 5%, 5 local recruitment capacity plus 1. Income from trade plus 5%, faction wide growth plus 20. Tax rate plus 5%, untainted enemy hero action success minus 15%. Plus 4 public order, fast dog. Let's go for Council of Burgomeisters. Sea region secured, Tarantula Coast. By the Emperor's authority. Reassuring presence. Fervent. Leader of renown. I usually like to go for logistician to increase the replenishment rate. I think we're going to go for focused shot. I want to reduce that cooldown. And we will end the turn once more. Or actually, let me see. Casualty replenishment rate. I forgot it did that. Recruitment cost minus 20% for pistoliers and outrider units. Growth plus 50. Casualty replenishment rate plus 8%. Upkeep minus 3% for pistoliers and outrider units. All armies. That's awesome. I This must be new because I don't remember it doing that last time I played Warhammer 2. Okay, so let's end the turn. We need to get those pastures. Faction encounter. Defenders of the Great Plan. The Drowned. Imperial supplies ready. The expedition may have only just begun, but the Emperor demands progress. To aid you, the Imperial Quartermaster sends word of reinforcements ready to dispatch the expedition. The four main divisions of the Empire's military each has a package ready. Choose whose shipment you would like to receive. One great cannon and one outrider with grenade launchers. The expedition shall be reinforced with regular artillery troops. Imperial Gunnery School. One war wagon and one war wagon with a mortar. The expedition shall be reinforced with regular war machines, Imperial Engineers, Knightly Orders, Cavalry Reinforcements, 
three Imperial Knights, two Pistoliers, which would be pretty cool. Infantry reinforcements. The expedition should be reinforced with regular foot soldiers. Two halberdiers, two huntsmen, one greatsword. Damn, dude. This is pretty cool. I don't know what to get. This is so damn much. A great cannon would be awesome, especially over now, right over a grenade launcher. I, I feel like they could do a lot of damage. Another war wagon would be really nice, though, man. They, I like them. They do a lot of damage. They fire so quickly. And a mortar. A war wagon with a mortar. We're going to be fighting a lot of lizard men. Would cavalry be good against them? I'm trying to think. Halberdiers would be really good against any dinosaurs. Any of the lizard men like great beasts that they bring out like the Bastillodons and things like that but if we're fighting just like Saurus warriors it might be useful to have some Imperial Knights Empire Knights with those charges Damn. Let's do it. I'm going to do nightly order. Ensure that one of the following buildings have been constructed. Coastal Town. Sorry about that. I had to go to... I had to go attend to my dog. The attachment of reinforcements has arrived. New cavalry units are ready for recruitment. Imperial troops, two pistoliers, and three Empire Knights. Marcus Wolfhart. And this is this this is the the uh, imperial supply system. We can immediately get them into our army this turn. The emperor's wrath, steam tank, armored, armor piercing causes terror unbreakable. What is the difference between this and a regular steam tank? Kaboom! Unit ability explosion, 20 seconds self. Unit is alive. Steam tank technology remains an inexact science, meaning they explode on occasion and among the enemy's ranks if good fortune prevails. Emergency vent. Explosion self. Contact burnt 10 seconds minus 8 leadership steam must be let off from time to time which leads to screaming scalding death for any foe too close to the Emperor's wrath during the battle. So I guess that's what makes it unique. It has that ability. Which I'm guessing is like an area of effect damage ability around itself. That's pretty cool. I like that. The Knights of Moor. Anti-infantry causes terror, magical aura. Grim Resolve. Immune to psychology for active if in melee. Affects allies in range. Okay, for now, let's get... I'll take both Outriders and one Imperial Knight, one Empire Knight. Coastal Village, Coastal Town. Coastal Town. Six turns until surplus, damn. We're gonna go ahead and upgrade this, because if we can get the pastures, it's gonna boost our population growth and our replenishment rate. It doesn't look like anyone's coming towards us right now. Settlements captured three. So total three.
The next care package will arrive in 34 turns. Advanced Imperial Supplies received. Recruit rank plus two for all Imperial Supply units. Unlocks construction of barracks and livery buildings. Hunts Marshal Elites. Advanced Imperial Supplies received. Recruit rank plus three for all Imperial Supplies units. Diplomatic Relations minus 30 with Lizardmen. Vanquishers of Evil. Elite Imperial Supplies received. Recruit rank plus three for all Imperial Supplies units. Unlocks construction of menagerie and foundry buildings. Scourge of the Emperor's Foes. Elite Imperial Supplies received. Recruit rank plus three for all Imperial Supplies units. Unlocks construction of the Engineer's Workshop building. Champions of the Empire. Elite Imperial Supplies received. Recruit rank plus four for all Imperial Supplies units. Progress in the Emperor's Mandate will no longer be lost. So we're not... We can't even get ourselves access to some of the best, highest tier stuff highest tier units until we start getting really high up like the menagerie and the foundry buildings I think the menagerie would give us demigriff knights and the foundry would give us like uh, the help blaster volley gun and the uh, rocket hellstorm rocket battery so yeah we're not gonna get access to the that kind of stuff for a long time Maybe we'll get access to it sooner from uh, reinforcements from the Imperial Supplies. But ourselves being able to recruit them in the New World, uh, that's going to take very long. I mean, we, we just took the settlement. I mean, to be honest, we just took like a sh shitty little settle settlement. It wasn't even like a, like a province capital. It went up by three. Gentlemen Jenkins. Defenders of the Great Plan. We could push our current engineering and technological limits further through research. Treasury plus 500. Destroy the following faction, Talaxlan. 12 turns to complete. Wolfhart, the listen men seem to respect this leader. Removing him and his followers would make a great statement of our intent and resolve. Destroy these monsters. Treasury plus 500. I should stop doing that accent. That guy just seems like he would talk in like a... In like a British accent. As regiments gain renown, their standards become talismans that are just as important as... as just as important as their sword arms. Plus 5 leadership. And plus 5% speed. We uh, leveled up again as Marcus Wolfhart, pl Public Order Plus One from our Bailiff. Marcus Wolfhart. Sharon True. Brass Lunged. I, honestly, I usually play with mods because I like to have more skill points per level so I can try to max everything out. Sleight of hand, double shot ammunition. Double shot ammunition, extra projectiles for huntsman units. Du du double shot ammunition, extra projectiles for huntsman units. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what that means. Maybe I'm just dumb. I'm assuming that double shot means that they fire two arrows at the same time. So every time they fire, they fire two rounds. Double shot. Ammunition. Extra projectiles for huntsman units. Yeah, because it does say extra projectiles. It doesn't say extra ammunition. Okay, so that, that'd be cool to get, man. Uh, available at rank 10. Range plus 12%. And enables sundering attacks. I wonder if this is just for Wolfheart or if this is for Arch this, this is for Archer units in general. Cause this is for huntsmen, obviously. This doesn't say No, this has to be just for Wolfheart. If it was for other units it would say so. We're gonna go for 
I think we're going to go for sure and true. So we can boost a huntsman. We can boost all of our missile units around, around Wolfheart. So now we've got a goal. We need to go destroy Talaxtlan. Talaxtlan. These are the Vampire Coast Mutineers. So we'll go defeat Talaxtlan and then we'll go... We'll probably declare war on the Vampire Coast Mutineers to try to get that first... That first uh, legendary hunter. Oh, that's right. This is Warhammer 2. They actually do replenish quicker within a settlement. I forgot about that. Now we can get more armor for our infantry. Melee defense plus four. Melee for plus four for melee infantry units and charge bonus plus eight percent for melee infantry units. Damn, I don't know. We do have free company militia now. Oh, this is just the ammunition. Missile resistance, missile damage for pistolers and outriders. Reload time reduction. Rifled barrels. Hunter's guild recruit rank plus two for all imperial supply units. Construction cost minus 10% for deports. And uh, construction time minus one for ports. I think we're gonna go for Tyfe rebates. So we can get that public order and the growth. We really need to grow these settlements quickly. And let's end the turn. I was just trying to see, like, I was trying to see if it actually tells you how much, how much the mandate improves by upgrading the ports, because it did say that we will get more from build, building up our cities and building up the ports, especially, because that is like the supply chain sending resources back to the empire. Population surplus, province, scorpion coast. We need uh, two to upgrade our capital. Marcus Wolfhart. All right, we'll wait. We'll wait one more turn. Or no, we can just start. We can start moving over there now. Well, now it'll take four turns. I didn't even see these guys were also replenishing. It's going to take another turn anyways to move over there. But we're going to start moving towards their capital. Marcus Wolfhart. We don't know if they have another army. Three, six, seven. Can we recruit any heroes? I'm guessing not. No. It is called a witch hunter. That's what it is. I want a fucking battle wizard, man. I, I love using the spells in this game. I don't remember I'm does missing. going into uh I'm not even going to do it. I don't remember if it if it cancels out the replenishment. One more turn and that will be finished being built. War declared Hexoatl and Clan Gnaw. I'm having fun with this DLC so far. 
it is fun. It is fucking stressful, though, because if we lose this army, we're pretty much done. If they destroy this army, and, uh, and then they go after our settlements, then we're done. I struggle to disagree. Their demands. Blue Vipers, they want a gift of 700. We're gonna decline that. Gritz Bootlicka. I think that's what it said his name was. Gritz Bootlicka. He wants us to lick his boots. He can bend... He can bend the knee to us. Or we'll hunt them down. Massacre them ourselves. Gribitz Bulika. Sorry about that. Somebody was here, so I had to go take care of that. Spirit of the Jungle. Isn't that... I actually don't know. I think this is the faction... The new Lizardman faction... I think my voice just fucking cracked. I think this is the new Lizardman faction for this campaign. Uh, I don't remember his name. Fuck. I'm terrible. At I'm not. In I'm not into the Warhammer lore stuff. Or I just don't know it. But I think that's the new faction. I wonder if they actually did. It. Can they come back? Honor thy neighbors. Appease your neighbors or keep hostile ones at bay for now at least. This will keep our borders stable and allow us to strike at enemies further afield. Diplomatic relations plus 10 with vampire coast mutineers. Okay, so Chotek has been upgraded to a coastal village. Stables, pistoliers. Livery, Empire Knights, Outriders, and Outriders with grenade launchers. If we had the foundry, which we can't get until. God damn, until 60. Oh, this is the level? Oh, this is. Okay, so this is the level right here. It's at 3. At 20, we can get the barracks and livery. And the barracks is this, right? Yeah, great swords. When can we get the armory? Okay, there's no limit on the armory. We can get that. A blacksmith. Armory. Let's go for the pastures so we can get the replenishment rate and we can get the growth. Wolfheart, let's go. Who the hell is calling me? Three missed calls. Oh uh, shit, I didn't realize it's been like an hour. Alright guys, uh, I'm gonna call it here. It's been like an hour. Damn, it's been an hour. We've only done seven turns. But we did have like... We did have two battles. And that did take up a while. So yeah, I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please hit the like. If you want to continue with me on this campaign and, if, and you're not subscribed yet, I hope you'll I hope you'll subscribe. I mean, it's completely up to you. I don't. If you don't want to, I mean, I understand that. To be honest, I only subscribe to people if I know that I'm gonna be watching their content regularly. So yeah, I understand. I hope you'll still continue watching though, even if you don't subscribe. I would. Honestly, I would appreciate it more if you did subscribe. Subscribe, but like I said, it's up to you. I understand. Sometimes I watch like, like I've been binge watching a bunch of like pyrocynical videos, and I haven't even subscribed to him yet. But uh, I'll probably go subscribe to him now. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like. If you didn't enjoy it, hit the dislike, and let me know what you 
uh, what you didn't like about it. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Uh, or give me any advice on the campaign. I've kind of been avoiding watching videos on this because I want to experience it all myself firsthand. But uh, I'll probably check out Lionheart's first episode. I just want to see like the differences, uh, any differences that he and I did, because I haven't watched his yet. I only watched like the first five or six minutes. Thanks, but anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time. Peace out.